Dad to be severed here, and welcome back to another episode of Don and Dad's Toxic Masculinity. And Mr. Fry, how are we doing there today? How are you enjoying that uh, cigar? Oh, uh, well, better than uh, the one you gave me that you purchased for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, spends a lot of money. It was the, the best cigar for a dollar. Come on, yeah. <laughs> the best cigar for a dollar. Yeah, it was only 10 years old. You know. <laughs> got, it, got it at a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel the love. I feel love. Introduce our a guest. Dollar. When the hell have you ever spent a dollar at one place, anyways? The the dollar store. Yeah, <laughs> you bitched about that too. <laughs> this is Rich Moreno. He's our third wheel on the show. Uh, he's our Andy, right? <laughs> and, and our new guest today is a good friend of mine. He's been a friend of mine since, what, 97, I think it was? Yeah, 98. 98, yeah. one of those. He's a mis miserable. So. <laughs> Bad year. So. Kenya Suda, Mr. Japan, pro bodybuilder. Been a buddy of mine forever. How are you doing, partner? Oh, very good. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> well, we can't get anybody else, so we said, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Well, should we start in, in, in uh, Ken's career? I mean, what? Uh, I mean, at what point in time did you did you meet, meet Ken? And what, what what was Ken doing at that time? Well, we met like like he said in ninety seven or ninety eight. Now I forget. Yeah, okay. when you got uh, hired by Mr. Inoki. Yeah, Mr. Inoki. Mr. Inoki's retirement. I did his retirement fight. match. Yeah. yeah. And, and that uh, was in April of 98, correct? So that was yeah, we're right. talking professional wrestling now. Yes, now. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, so, right. right. Okay. For New Japan Pro Wrestling way back when. Um, it was just going up to its peak. And uh, when they hired me, it plumbed it down. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been fighting this way back ever since. <laughs> right. Uh, I was uh, with uh, Mr. Inoki. I was still a professional bodybuilder. So Mr. Inoki was my uh, supporter and helped me with the uh, promotion of my, you know, big name and uh, through magazine and media. And at the same time, I was also coaching uh, Mr. Inoki's fighters and New Japan Pro Wrestler at the, at the uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Inoki Dojo in L.A. And uh, Don got hired to do Mr. Inoki's retirement match. And that was a tournament, right? Actually. Yeah, that, yeah, it was set up as a tournament. And um, I, I miraculously won the tournament. And <laughs> his, got his retirement show. And generally, you know, it's a... Retirement's like a Broadway. He goes 30, 45 minutes to, you know, give the uh, wrestler a chance to say goodbye to their fans and give their fans something to remember. And about two minutes into the match, I broke three of Mr. Inoki's ribs. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For some of you guys that don't know or never he heard of Antonio Inoki, he's <laughs> just the biggest name you could ever have in, in Japan. He's respected right. by everybody. He's just at the top of the food chain over there. Um, has yeah. he ever slapped you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't make a mistake. Not in front, like of, not in front of anybody. <laughs> not in front of anybody? <laughs> not in front of anybody. That's a little inside joke. It's yeah. a big honor to get slapped yeah. by Antonio yeah, Inoki. I heard, I heard that they, the people lined up like in the ring. They, yeah. they oh, climb in there. Yeah. Thousands, yeah. Big thousands big of, of people up and down mm -hmm. the stadium waiting just to get That's kids. Busy. And he does not discriminate. You know, he, <laughs> he slaps everybody with some veracity. <laughs> Right, Ken. Exactly wow. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, where did where did that came, come about? Uh, this, uh, I mean, just did it happen. I, I imagine it happened somewhere during the course of a match, right? And <laughs> or, or maybe that's something it, we, emulating we, a match, probably right. You know, emulating he slapped somebody and what do yeah. emulating mean? It, uh, we'll look it up later. <laughs> Rich, you can't use those I kind of think, words around Don here. Right? I don't <laughs> think it means what you think it means. <laughs> you keep saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he never never slapped you in public, huh? No. <laughs> but, but okay, uh, but you were a bodybuilder. You said at the beginning, what, right. what what drew you to bodybuilding? I mean, how young were you when you started to your bodybuilding? Yeah, career? I was actually, um, you know, I was playing baseball. Your baseball player, yeah. You know. I came to the states uh, when I was a junior in high school in order to achieve my major league baseball dream, and uh, I played high school baseball and went to college, and uh, I was uh, you know USC. But I got hurt my elbow, you know, hurt my elbow, so I couldn't throw. You were high elbow. school in Utah, correct? Yeah, I graduated from a high school in Utah. Yeah, then mm -hmm. you got a scholarship to UCLA or USC? Uh, USC, yeah. And I heard you had some pro offers too at that time. Yeah, 
But, not, uh, not in baseball, though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, during baseball, um, when I was playing baseball, you know, sometimes my energy level was good. Other times I was tired. So I didn't know there must be a way to kind of overcome the fatigue or boost up the energy. And I was talking to trainers and coaches, and nobody really knew. You know, they just told me to eat yogurt, and I got a diarrhea. Okay. <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> They're all laughing about it still. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially when you play baseball, because most of the uh, trousers you're wearing are, are white. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it the whole new meaning is sliding home. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, but, uh, so I had to kind of, uh, I was curious about learning nutrition and physiology. And uh, I always like to lift weights because, uh, you know, you have to be strong. And I want to be more masculine, you know, big muscles and strength. So uh, I picked up weights. Okay, this is something I can do. I set the goal to be a pro bodybuilder. And my first goal will be mis- taking Mr. Japan national title and then become professional bodybuilder. So are you like young 20s at this time? Or are you, uh, what? Yeah, I was 22. Okay, hey, mid, now late body. 20s, he just got out of high school. <laughs> 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 Finally got those credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wasn't like a normal Japanese that really well, smart. Well, no, he, he was talking about his baseball career first, but uh, so I didn't know at what, what point you, okay. You transitioned. Okay, into, okay yeah. transitioned from, okay. It, I mean, it follow, took, uh, follow along, <laughs> Mr. Sermon. Okay. Uh, for I'm, you, I'm that try, means changed no over. Oh, Transition oh. changed over. Right. No, <laughs> but it took two years for me to set uh, the next goal. Because I lived for a baseball dream, uh, you know, sacrifice Huge, everything. huge yeah, in Japan. I set the goal when I was 12, and it came over here, and I would be the first Major League Baseball player from Japan that time if I had made it. So uh, it was a big uh, chance to risk I took, but uh, I had to do it, chase my dream. So uh, I did it, and uh, but unfortunately, I didn't make it. So next goal, okay, what am I going to do in my life? That was the biggest, hardest thing that... Uh, yeah, that was the probably the lowest point of my life. That everything was Until gone. Until you met him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but anyway, so I set a goal that I want to do a bodybuilding, you know, for real. But I spent six to seven years to just build a solid muscle mass. It would take that. It takes that long time to build muscles. And uh, Ken, so how, how what was your what was your weight like when you started that process? Oh, light, hundred and seventy five pounds, <laughs> small. But what what uh, was the what would you say would be the biggest or the heaviest you ever got though doing your yeah. bodybuilding? So go from one seventy five up to, to I went up to two hundred and ninety pounds. Wow! <laughs> wow! And uh, one hundred seventy five kilos. <laughs> <laughs> and then came down to uh, you know three percent body fat on stage at two forty five, wow. and depleted water lost ten pounds, so you know two thirty five stage. So that was the. Uh, do you do you like the nickname the Arnold Schwarzenegger of Japan? Yeah, I was honored <laughs> because yeah, he was great in bodybuilding. He was the yeah. you know greatest ever, yeah. and uh, I mean he came to this country from Austria to achieve his goals. And when I read about him, that motivated me. So I want to do that, you know, same to chase my dream and take a chance and do it. So, <clears throat> but the next minute, uh, you know, fans. Uh, Started to call me Japan's Arnold. Wow, that's great. That's honor. I wasn't even close to that level, but still. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wake up over there, Fry. <laughs> you, you, don't look, know, huh? you don't look anything like Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound like him either. <laughs> yeah, so. I was reading about something. Uh, you, like the, your lineage of where you're from, um, is tied right. to samurais. Right. Mm-hmm. Can you go over that a little bit? That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, my uh, dad, actually grandpa, had, had the family tree, and that goes back to uh, 46 generations, wow. and they're all samurai samurai lords, and lived in Kyoto city, and uh, I think a 700, uh, uh, 701 AD, one of my ancestors set the. Uh, basically one of the Japanese, I, I think it's a Japanese constitution, first Japanese constitution, and it's known as uh, Taiho Ritsuryo in 70 AD, and my ancestor's name is uh, Fujiwara no Fuhito, and 
Yeah, I didn't know. I studied in school. I didn't know my direct. That was my ancestor way back. But my dad uh, grow, uh, showed me. My grandpa showed me the family tree. And I couldn't even read the you know characters, old ones. But uh, that's how I kind of found out. Does that does that but give you a little sense of pride and like you know how, yeah, how big I that is over there? <laughs> that's like, yeah, I feel like I couldn't let my ancestors down. You know, I have to be kind of a like a samurai way of samurai mentality wise, integrity, honor, respect. Those things have to be carried on. So, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, did you did your uh, body build that? Did that open up additional doors? I mean, going into maybe movies. Have you been involved in movies or commercials yeah. or? Because I just think that going from a baseball right. player and going into bodybuilding, right. I'm sure that you had to have, especially at that size. Yeah, I was. Um, I was bodybuilders in Japan small, <laughs> you know, so I became the biggest uh, bodybuilder ever, uh, and I was only 185 pounds on stage that time. But, uh, you know, everybody was 165, 170 small. So I became the uh, biggest first heavyweight bodybuilder out of Japan and uh, did well in the competition. But after taking Mr. Japan, I thought all the doors would open, and that wasn't the case. Really? <laughs> no money was coming in. Because there have been many Mr. Japans before. So uh, it wasn't, I was the biggest one ever, but still, uh, still tough. So I had to be professional in the U.S. and did something that uh, no other Japanese have done before. And it took a while, but then finally started to, you know, doors started to open. And the magazine, you know, the, on the Iron Man magazine, that's the biggest magazine yes, for in Japan, you know. And it's the same company here, but uh, biggest magazine in Japan. Ken and, uh, got me on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. He was what do you mean, was I really? <laughs> 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 I, I could have went the other way. I was going to say you, you sat. He sat on your magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got on the cover. He got on the cover. I know you were oiled up, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when that magazine started plummeting down. <laughs> I know, but uh, yeah, then doors opened up uh, for probably five to six years. Uh, you know, I, I, whatever I did, the magazine did the feature story on everything I did in terms of, it. in addition to my training uh, routines and competition results and anything else I did. So I started to get offers, uh, you know, movies, uh, TV shows, or a couple of documentaries were made and uh, got offers to Both, both in uh, Japan and the United States? I mean, I'm, just, yeah. I'm thinking you probably had that, that dual career going for yourself. Mm -hmm. had to have. Japan yeah. and the U.S. both, yeah. Good. And uh, because I'm kind of go getter, <laughs> active, so you, I don't, I didn't just sit and wait. But I contacted some companies here, and especially at the competitions, a lot of companies from uh, bodybuilding supplement companies, other companies are there. So I talked to everybody. So next minute, uh, you know, they started to give me opportunities, and uh, picked up a lot of, uh, you know. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Well, no, I actually, I, I, well, that's the, the, <coughs> Amer the American dream. I mean, lots of people come to the United States, yeah. and they're, they're, they come here because it is the land of opportunity. Right. So, mm -hmm. And it's where, you know, there's, but there, there's a lot of Americans, they don't see that opportunity from that. They just take it for granted. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, a lot of people haven't, tra right. haven't traveled anywhere, you know, and so they don't know what to compare it to. But we're the greatest mm -hmm. country on the planet of the earth. Yeah. But, I mean, no question about it. And yeah. uh, you can make anything, you know, any of your dreams come true here. Yeah. Whereas in other countries, you know, not so easy. Right. That's true. I totally agree. <laughs> so yeah. when you were a kid, did you look at the United States as a place you wanted to go? Or was it just how it naturally no. happened? <laughs> For your baseball career. Yeah, baseball dream, yeah. 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 I, mean, that. I didn't know anybody here, right? So I didn't even speak English. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know what would happen to me. Neither did Rich. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and these two guys don't really speak English either. <laughs> <laughs> we just, like, communicate. I don't know how this is even happening. Grunts. Grunts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also Japan, uh, and pros and cons. Um, Japan has a certain way they kind of so socially they teach you how to behave, how to speak. And if you try to do something unusual, whatever they tell you, society tells you you're wrong. 
So uh, in a way, there's no freedom. In America, there's lots of freedom. So that's what the first thing I noticed when I came to this country. And your dad was a cop, too, right? No. No? Well, <laughs> you I forgot. That <laughs> no. That's my brother. Is your brother? Yeah. Oh, I thought your father was, too. Okay, I messed that one up. <laughs> yeah. Older, younger brother? I mean, do you have, do you have um, other brothers and sisters? or? Yeah, just one younger brother. Okay. And uh, he's actually detective, catches all the bad guys. One time he was, uh, have you seen the movie Donnie Brasco? Yeah. Yeah, he was an undercover cop. Oh, cool. And joining, uh, basically hanging out with the mobs, Yakuza's. And, uh, oh, I can't tell this too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oops. He will be in danger, but... Uh, <laughs> but His <he's> address is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what but happens in Rapungi stays in Rapungi. <laughs> yeah. Right, but, uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, he now... Um, he's a little guy. Never, you know, think he's a cop. He's like probably 5'4", 110, 20 pounds. So, but uh, he's got a... He's a cop of here. Right. Yeah, no, you got the medallion. Well, right. it, but it's easier to blend in. You're not uh, standing out, so it's easier to right. blend in and mm-hmm. not bring attention to yourself, I'm right. sure. Mm-hmm. Like the 240-pound right. guy walks in the room <laughs> yeah. like this guy yeah, with his buttons popping <laughs> open. Yeah, I, yeah I, can't, I can't imagine you go from that light of a weight and put out that kind of weight. Yeah, wow. it took years, though, probably 10, 12 years just to grow. <laughs> and it must have had nothing but stretchy pants be that big uh, at, at at that point. I mean, if they could, because <laughs> clothing wise, geez. Cost okay, let's move. I know, I know. Scared, scared it makes pants. you uncomfortable, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's move just, on. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> thinking about the cost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're uh, training anybody right now? Yeah, since uh, when I retired, I used to, you know, train non-athletes and coach some athletes who are fitness and bodybuilding competitors and a couple guys who want to do strength and conditioning for MMA fights, or baseball, all kinds of, yeah. What's sports. the biggest baseball name you trained? Uh, yeah, uh, his name is Ichiro Suzuki. He played in Major League Baseball. I think he has two uh, Major League records. But uh, he's a small guy, 160 pounds, 5'11". But, you know, crazy hand-to-eye coordination. And, uh, yeah, I think when he broke a Pete Rose record, Pete Rose got pissed. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. soon as you said Pete Rose, I'm thinking for stealing bases. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So oh, is he stealing that he broke Pete Rose's record? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But Pete Rose made a comment that um, Ichiro's uh, record in Japan, you know, shouldn't be counted. And but Ichiro was a big fan of uh, Pete Rose. Up right? to that comment. Yeah. <laughs> and he was a kind of a sad that instead of, you know, I think Pete Rose should have told him a good job. Good job. You know? Yeah, yeah. Supported yeah. him. Still, that, Just yeah. be a bigger guy. But, you know. So that kind of hurt each row. But, <laughs> yeah, but he did a uh, great, crazy job. What record did he break of Rose's? I think he had the uh, most hits in one season. And uh, ten, cons- uh, 10 years consecutively, 10 years, he hit more than 200 hits per season. So, and Pete Rose had a nine years in the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Should we, we let, let, let our uh, viewers and listeners know that <laughs> no. if, they hear, if they hear all this uh, noise taking place, that, a couple uh, of pet alligators we, we got uh, underneath. Yeah, the, that's Don, the Don's table. girlfriend. <laughs> 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 She's a little angry this week. <laughs> We'll get we'll yeah. get uh, Queenie up there eventually for a cameo here at some point in time. <laughs> I can't work <laughs> under these conditions. <laughs> you got a question? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what are you feeding these things? <laughs> <laughs> so how how did uh, you used to coach uh, the Japanese uh, IFL team, right? Right. How right. did you get involved in that? Tokyo I mean, Sabers. Yeah. Well, initially, uh, that team was uh, offered to Mr. Inoki. Yeah. But Mr. Inoki wouldn't do that <laughs> because... He's above you know, that. He, yeah, 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 above nice. that. And, well, he uh, was a senator for... You yeah, know, he was a senator. He was just too busy. And uh, he was running his own uh, shows. Slapping people. <laughs> yeah. he, he, made, <laughs> he, made, he made a lot of pro wrestlers famous yeah. by yeah. Uh, doing the job for him over there. Right. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, how he introduced you was... Big time on right national TV, yeah. right? Hundred thousand people in the audience. That was crazy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yes, ja- you did. Japanese yeah. audiences are, are awesome. It's 
you get a hundred thousand people in in a in a Tokyo Dome or Saitama yeah. Super Arena or something like that. It's it's yeah, pretty cool to watch. Rich, right. Rich is one of my sparring partners, and he went to a lot of my fights. You know, right. Mm-hmm. So the, then they uh, you were coaching at the same time for the IFL here, right? Right. And and you were you had a, a undefeated season over there, right? Yeah. Did you have an undefeated after season? After the first year. First year was we didn't know what we were doing. So, you know, just as had any guy just fight. But then, okay, I know the deal, so I changed it. And uh, next season, we just didn't lose. Did they allow but you to recruit your own fighters, or yeah. were they bringing them in? Yeah, well, we are allowed to sign any fighters, but we are not allowed to change fighters, huh? Yeah. That was the problem. It was a screwball <laughs> thing. So yeah. what was our authority? I think yeah. some fighters didn't show up to practice or late or they are injured. They can't, they couldn't fight, but they came to pick up checks. Right. It's like terrible. Was there any uh, standouts on your team? Who, who do you remember being a good, a, yeah, really good fighter? Uh, Vladimir Matushenko. That's he a good one. in the UFC before and came to, fought in Japan, K1 Dynamite, Inoki Bombay, and then came to the IFL at Sabres. And I think he went back to UFC. So, yeah, he was yeah. Uh, undefeated, you know. Yeah, he was really tough. Uh, I remember that. Inoki Bubaye was fun. You know, we, yeah. we did one or two of them on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a that was a big show. Yeah, well, usually, uh, I mean, in Japan, they always use the, the, those those year-end, uh, you know, grand-type shows like that. I mean, I, the United States has never done anything like that yet. Mm-hmm. I've always noticed that uh, I, I've been ordered to Japan a couple of times for big end-of-the-year blowout shows and uh, – I still think that that's a great opportunity, though, inside the United States. No, it doesn't. I yeah. don't know why. And they really, they really treat you well over there oh, too. Yeah. They just, you know, they they really take care of their fighters and their teams and everybody really well. Well, just just being in the country, I mean, it's it's clean. You don't yeah. see graffiti uh, like you <laughs> see in the United States uh, on, on all the walls. I mean, it's uh, the streets are clean. No graffiti on, on walls. And well, if you're on welfare, you, you go to work. You clean the mm-hmm. damn streets. You clean the graffiti off the walls. You know, you pump fuel in vehicles. Yeah. You, know? well, yeah. well, you don't just lay on your ass at home and get a check. Get a check. Right. Entitlements. You know, yeah, you'll go out there. <laughs> you'll go out there and stand in the rain, you know. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, where is our stimulus check? Is that <laughs> happening? Is that still happening? What's going on with that? Yeah, but what I, I picked yours up for you. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but what, what are the other nice things? Okay, because right now we're in the United States, still all the, the masks. You have to wear masks. But, but over in Japan, I, mean, for, I, I noticed that right from the get-go, if someone had right. a f- cold or flu or something like that, they were very conscious of that. Proactive. They, were, mm-hmm. they, they wore a mask you know, to be kind to everybody else. Because I mean, first time I saw that, I kept, th- I, I, I kept yeah. thinking that was kind of strange to see that. But it, you know, after a while, I was like, you just re- you, you really have to take your hat off for them. it's a very kind yeah. gesture that they do. Right, you don't give it to somebody else. Right, right. So you wear. Yeah. And there's a lot of people courteous. that uh, I mean, there's a lot of people usually in condensed areas, so mm-hmm. it's you know, close proximity. Well, the, they have yeah. a real good public tran- transit system. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, the subway system is is trains. Subways, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the trains are phenomenal. You yeah. know, we got the bullet train. We've ridden the bullet train several yeah. times. Get across yeah. f- from one end of the... Down to Osaka. <laughs> yeah, down to Narita yeah. Airport, from all the, the way into town in no from, time at all. Yeah, that's know? right. <laughs> but, but I mean, yes. I would if, if they need to help push a few more people on there, that's... <laughs> there, 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 there is... I, I, yeah. That, that, I got to I got to I got to I got to Ken, I got to tell you this story real quick. So Don's already a, a pretty big name in mm-hmm. Japan. And we're we're getting off the airport, and you off know, the airport, the, airplane. Off, off the airplane. Sorry, we're getting off the airplane, and we're walking through the airport, and he he's pushing the cart yeah. with all of our luggage on it. You know, <laughs> then we got wild, three three or four training partners walking next to him. There's yakking away. You know, we're talking, yeah. having a good time. Guys, he's, they these come, photographers are here yeah. for me. They They're start coming me. and taking his picture, you know, and he's pushing this cart like this. And he kind of just pushes it away and just walks out and lets somebody else grab it. But we're like, what are you guys here for? <laughs> yeah. I bring you to push my cart. I, I push, I'm pushing everybody's luggage out. You know? <laughs> Part of the train. I think that was the yeah. last. I think that was the last time I went to Japan. Yeah, yeah, you were done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or we brought that dumbass uh, Shane. 
uh, uh, have you ever been, you know, what country have you gone to? Huh? I haven't gone to any country. So, okay, well, what states have you been to? Mm-hmm. I haven't been to any states. I, I haven't been out of the county. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, we take him, and uh, so I'm, we're going out to the ring, and I'm in, I'm in front of everybody, naturally, you know, and um, I, I stop and wave and do this and do that, you know, big cheer. <laughs> yeah. And uh, next thing you know, boom, he walks in the front. He, he's stumbling along like this and walks right into me, you know, not paying attention to what the hell's going on. He did uh, bring an orange back. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, and got it uh, you, snuck you, through you customs. You had to actually take him somewhere to get a passport or something like that, because I mean, you can't can't just go yeah. from uh, being uh, on the farm or something like that, and then uh, you know go to. Oh, to he Japan. did. Yeah, okay. he he got a passport just for that event. Yeah, what, it was, his big trip. Yeah, he took yeah. it out to the big. And the city. first one, first and last. <laughs> <laughs> Could have took him out to Benson to get him out of the county first, you know. Uh, well, he took Warm him, him up. Texas, took him to Texas after that for the IFL, and he uh, didn't make weight. And not only did he not make weight, but he passed out right in front of one of the uh, one, one of the judges, you know. And he says, yeah. that guy's not fighting. So <laughs> I said, send his ass home. Don't even put him on a plane. Put him on a bus. Send him <laughs> home. I don't want to see him. Yeah. In Shane's defense, he's a really I nice guy. That yeah, he's a nice yeah. guy, but <laughs> yeah, Actually, we were fighting. You know. <laughs> oh, he called me after that. He wanted to come to Sabres. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> you can't make weight. It's you know, <laughs> if you, it's like it's like uh, these trainers who, mm-hmm. you know, their damn fighters are hurting each other. Oh, that's right. Okay, iron sharpens iron, but you know you've got to be smart enough to to yeah. get to the freaking fight. You can't defend your title if you can't get to the fight. Right. <laughs> that's the first yes. thing of fighting. You know, is get to the damn fight. Right. One weight. You gotta be professional. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all share uh, the amateur wrestling background, so making weight has been instilled over yeah. quite a few years. Yeah. That's the biggest city in the world. To never to, to miss miss that weight. Yeah. The, the second thing would, would be to get pinned, because yeah. you can always make up a loss. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you get it pinned out there, I mean, that's six points. Six points, man. Yeah, that's that's a big, big six swing. points to come back. Yes. Mm-hmm. But every time you can pick one up, that that that's just a bonus bonus you, round. You, I, I'm sure you you have similar thoughts, but if you come from a culture of hardcore wrestling, not making weight. Is is it's not an option. It's, oh, I mean, you, it, 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 it's, it's a very very uh, rare where I come from that you would not make weight. You know, or you you really looked down upon yeah. if you yeah. No, it's you make weight. I mean, it, it it's was, one uh, of the seven deadly sins. Right? <laughs> 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 How did you guys lose weight as wrestlers? I'm still working on like, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong way most of the time at a young age, right? Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> At a young age, it's the mm-hmm. wrong way. It's you know dehydrating yourself and, yeah, yeah. and starving yourself because it's not planned out as a young person, you know. But by the time you get in college, it should be a craft, you know. No, th- there's a real mm-hmm. skill set to it. It's at certain yeah. colleges. I mean, they're, they're they know they know their, their crafts. I mean, it's whether mm-hmm. they're in a sauna or a steam room and they're yeah. sweating it out. Uh, there's and they get as you sweat. What uh, forms on your body to cool it? And they'll sit there with like a tongue depressor or something like that. They'll scrape, scrape the scrape those sweat out off so that mm-hmm. they continue to sweat. And then they'll be they'll bring stationary bikes in there, or they'll be uh, pummeling, or they'll be doing different calisthenics or something like that just to keep get that that sweat going. I remember at, mm-hmm. at Fargo at Nationals, it's a big uh, high school tournament. Here, uh, saw a kid in the sauna and he's counting the drips off of his nose. <laughs> and he's like, "I'm like, why are you counting?" He's like. Because when I get to 212, yeah. I know that's a pound. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you a story about, about weight cutting because, again, big sin. So I'm coaching at Michigan State at the time, and one of my, my athletes, he, uh, it, it's a two-day tournament. And he saw by the draw, he didn't think he was going to get – he wasn't going to go very far in the tournament. Mm. And somehow he did. He squeaked out a couple wins, and but he ate and drank – Consumed just a little too much, so now he's got to make weight yet that night. So he's he's got on the plastics, he's got on the cotton suits, and he's he's working out, working out. And he, but you can see mentally he's starting to break. Okay, so uh, it's like he can't run around. Okay, okay, 
put you on the bike. So he's on the bike. She still tried to go, still gonna go there. And he started, he's always started to cry and stuff like that. And I was like, God, okay, go sit, just go sit in the sauna now. So he goes to sit in the sauna. As, as he goes in the sauna, I stripped out to my skivvies, underwear. Different story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to stay, stay on the track. Okay, <laughs> stay on the track. <laughs> so I walk into the into the into the sauna, and uh, and he he said there. And he, he basically just he, he looks at me. He didn't he doesn't realize I'm, I'm down to my skivvies here. Should right we now. be hearing this? <laughs> well, okay, this this Frank is all, all PC. <laughs> you know, all PC. But it's but he gets up and he starts you know crying something. And I, and I pushed him back down, and his eyes got big. I go biggest city in the world. I go. You're gonna make weight, whether it's sweat or blood. You're gonna make weight. He gets up and he's he's like, I can't, I can't get on. I push him back down. He gets back up. I'm like, get mad, push it, pummel stuff like that. And, and literally, I I got him going for like a good 10, 15 minutes, and he's almost like crying and whole nine yards. And but we got got him got him on weight. I, I probably lost four or five pounds <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the same day. Had to wring out my underwear. Okay, the not okay it makes it any better. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but when it was all done, and he stepped on the mm-hmm. scale. He make weight. He's like, "Thanks, coach." Yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah. he he knew he wasn't going to be able to do it, and that's sometimes. I mean, you look at some things that, that a coach will do, regardless of what the sport is. Some people think that you cross the line, mm-hmm. but the same token, no. Yeah. Because had I allow him simply just to fail, what did I really do for him? What did I teach him? The fact right. is that I was, I was willing to go in there and you know push him. I just, I mean, he actually, you know, same gentleman, I still stay in contact with him. He always, he, he breaks that he, up all the time. Thank you for doing that. You can always yeah. say, but did you die? <laughs> 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 no, you're still here. You're all right. So, Ken, uh, right. did you have, like, when you were trying to get on, on stage for a competition right. and you were trying to lose weight, did you have a number that you wanted to get to? Or was it uh, always a percentage of body fat, you know, what, how did, uh, and, and, and what did you do to lose weight for that? Well, the, uh, there was no target weight. It just have to look right. So if you are soft, we can tell. You have to come, come down to, say, 4% body fat and 3% body fat, big difference. And, uh, you know, 3%, your skin becomes like an onion skin. So you can see through muscle, uh, fibers, everything. And 4%, 5% are too soft. So, but then your muscle, I mean, body Fatty. size. Yeah. <laughs> Fatty, 5%. <Right. laughs> But a 2% difference with body fat, your body looks much bigger. It is bigger. So you have to see that how the, what the judge is looking for. Some competitions, judges want to see a little softer or bigger. Other judges don't care. They look at the condition. If you're not shredded to the bones, they don't care how big you are because it's soft. So They've had people uh, pass out on stage, right? Yeah. Yeah. When, yes, but some guys They've just. They've cramped uh, up so bad, then they yeah, pass out. That's the thing. Gets to made and try to get in condition. Uh, you know, you have to be, you have to understand science. So, you know, it becomes very scientific to, to for the final 10, uh, 10 days of a conditioning. And you have to basically keep as many minerals as possible in your system so your muscles won't cramp up when you deplete water. So how are you gonna do that? That's another thing. A lot of guys, okay, just you know, then how are you gonna deplete water without losing minerals? Powder, See, potassium. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, were, were Powder, you, water, just that water. <laughs> were you ever at that point of, of almost passing out as we're walking out on the stage nah. because there's a lot of it that, that you have to you yeah. pose it down? Well, only when you saw you wringing out your underwear, <laughs> <laughs> saw you stripping down. <laughs> Is this all worth it? <laughs> no. I don't want to no. do this anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, Coach Severn makes you lose weight. He starts <laughs> taking his clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Just scares the shit out of her. Good for a couple teardrops, uh, you know, some sweat. <laughs> no, but uh, now the early years, the first a couple of years. You, know, you say the early years? Me. Yeah. <laughs> early or early? Early years. <laughs> Just trying to figure it out, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, I almost passed out. Well, I couldn't flex, you know, muscles enough because I was way, I was way too tired. Yeah, so I didn't, I dieted down too hard or I didn't carb load enough or, you know, depleted water too much. So just had to figure out, get the complete formula. And once I mastered it, it was easy. But the but, judging and bodybuilding is in the early part of the day where the show is at night, correct? Uh, early part of the day is uh, pre-judge. 
So pretty much, it's a more technical points you get. Right. And at night, it's called a fi- it's final. Uh, so only top 10 or top six guys are judged. And by that time, pretty much 90% of the you know, placing is decided. So, yeah. So n- <coughs> I kind of always heard that they, they put some junk. I mean, they, they eat a lot of junk at some point. Time. It just it pops out their their veins and they, they, they just pop out. Is there something yeah. you can elaborate on, on that where it's... Uh, like, uh, say, once you deplete water and, you know, you're really ripped. And in the backstage, before you came out to stage, you have to pump up muscles. When, that, when we do that, we take a lot of sugar on purpose. So it can be fruit or honey, uh, you know, anything. But you don't want to take sodium. It's just a more just sugar. And then, you know, that when you eat, take a lot of sugar, glycogen gets released. You know, glycogen yep, yep. releases the insulin in your bloodstream. And that's when muscles pump crazy, veins pop up. And you're dry as hell because there's no water retention in your body. And you just, you know, <laughs> muscles get boom. And it's just uh, crazy, more pumped than usual because of a carb loading process. Your muscles already had more than more glycogen than usual because of carb le- depletion before carb loading, and you carb load crazy. So everything you know comes out. Say so use sugar before you pump up. That comes out to your bloodstream, and then uh, from carb loading, all the stored glycogen comes out to your bloodstream. So you get the extra pump more than usual. So. Yeah, a friend of mine and Jerry over there, uh, Tiny Meeker has what power sugar or something like that. Yeah, power sugar. And what's what's, what's Tiny? What does that mean? Power sugar? Yeah, it's cocaine. <laughs> okay, that's right. Isn't that power sugar? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like. It. I think everybody knows about that one, right? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I, I mean, I heard of it through Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so what's Tiny Meeker's power sugar? Like to be able to tell you? Yeah. Okay. Trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> we, we decided oh, we, we weren't going to put that on, on radio at all. Well, we dropped his <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Tiny Meager. Yeah. Crank call. <laughs> Power sugar. All right. So what do you got yeah. going on right now, Ken? Uh, right now, this coronavirus pandemic is making things difficult. Yeah. So I, you know, a couple projects are delayed. And one of them I was offered to do was an infomercial uh, exercise video. And uh, it was, uh, 15, in Japan, right? In Japan. This is for Japan. And 15, 20 years ago, Taibo was, uh, you know, crazy, had a big hit. Billy Banks. Yeah, I think they generated $1.2 billion of sales worldwide. Crazy. <laughs> well, it had to be uh, more than uh, 15 years ago because I remember in uh, The Ultimate Ultimate in 96, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was. <laughs> A fighter whose name was Ty Bowden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I swear to you. I swear to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And okay. so. So everybody knew Ty that Ty Bo, Ty there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, that's the guy I wanted to fight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was going to go with the music. I need this music yeah. to, to fight. Just, just turn the music off. When, when we get in there, turn the music off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. So what kind of yeah. stuff are you going to do? Is it is it going to be uh, everything, cardio? Is it going to be more... more uh, it's more of a body shaping, toning exercises. And for, I can't be... For the average shape. person here right now, or are you going to try yeah. to... Or are you yeah. going to shoot a couple of different videos for... Here's for the beginner, here's for that intermediate type person, or uh, here's for that more of that higher end person? All for beginners. Okay. <laughs> ladies. We're like a 80% of uh, you know customers, buyers are ladies. So... Oh. Yeah, I got to look, you know, sharp. So you're going to do it in a Speedo, <laughs> yeah. basically, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now I get wrong attention. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you said you were uh, you were also writing, doing some writing, right? Yeah, I still, you know. Um, what, letters and such? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don <laughs> Fry, yeah. stop calling me. <laughs> get a haircut. <laughs> get a haircut. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, writing, uh, you know, TV series, you know, that story that kind of related to uh, trying to bring in samurai mentality to the, you know, characters. And uh, was it present day or when's the set then? Uh, present day. Okay. Uh, okay I mean, there have been a lot of movies, TV shows on Vikings and you know, like warriors, and they show the you know they they fight for honor or you know those things in a Western world. 
they show that, but now there haven't been any, you know, summarize or, you know, samurai mentality related to TV series, mm-hmm. some modern era. So I'm kind of writing the story, and uh, I got I got to do it instead of waiting for somebody to do it. So yeah, yeah. So you're a you're a samurai warrior who walked through a time portal, and you're you're here now, or what? Um, no, it's a, say I would say inherited samurai mentality, like generations after generations, kind of like uh, I can relate to, so I can write. You know, yeah. My but, th- but this, I guess, down where you go with this, that you're putting it in the present day. I mean, it's a samurai in present day, or, or are you talking about it? it was sh- going well, back you're looking at me. He's one right. right. <laughs> 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 where, where'd, you, where'd you get lost in this thing? <laughs> I'm not uh, confused one on you. Dan, uh, meet Don Fry. <laughs> Don Fry, this is Kenya Suda. <laughs> hey, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But it's some things like, uh, you know, current modern society, a lot of, uh, I think, men lost uh, manhood. It's like you yeah. say... Uh, you know, guy has a wife and girlfriend. If something happens, guy runs f- runs away first, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get up, honey. Like that. <laughs> I think you're talking about the United States more than any place, though. Yeah. Would, would you say something like that? Because different cultures, different countries, it, there's a whole different pecking order of right. things. But uh, yeah, so uh, again, yeah, are you aiming that towards the American market? Yeah, I, uh, well, again, we I guess. Wanna... We want to do it in we're, the we're not exactly we're having Dodd Fry here. We're not exactly politically correct, okay? So yeah, I, there, there's a, a lot of things that uh, yeah that uh, need to be be changed on up. But, but yeah, there, there's is uh, the the male role is mm-hmm. a very weak role inside the United States. Right, very weak it's role. Changed a lot with all the like they's yeah. and <laughs> yeah. you know instead of he or she, <laughs> they or. You know, it's it, multiple. It, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. Or, or wait, so they, they allow you to declare. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, are you in touch with uh, today? Are you in touch with your your feminine side? Or are you in touch with yeah, your I'm, masculine I'm, side? I'm going to make a comeback in the UFC <laughs> as a woman. As a woman, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm feeling rather uh, feminine today, yeah. so I'm going to be weighing in. Yeah, I think you have to come up with a, like a, a different type of name right there with that mustache. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be the prettiest heavyweight g- woman out there. <laughs> yeah, a name like oh, Olga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? About you know. Uh, Men, transgender men doing uh, sports with women. Oh, that's that's screwed up. <laughs> yeah, I think the loser men only do that. You yeah, know? it's like, why do they want to go into women's division and try to be champion? That's a joke. They, they, they can't can win. Even, they can't. They can't. Right. They can't, can't pull it off they can't, the men's. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think next one will be a trans race. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be okay. I'm. I'm Japanese. I'm, I'm gonna be like a white person tomorrow. Yeah. I identify so, as a white I guy. Decide, yeah. Yeah. It's you just, clean my yard now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so you're gonna have the man's tea and the woman's tea yeah. and then the Uno's tea, right? right. right. <laughs> yeah. But that's unfair. You know, they should make a transgender category. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you you want to totally be a transgender, agree. that's right? your business, you know. But yeah. don't don't compete with an advantage, right? You know the the whole history of sports is trying to keep things fair, right? And, and on a level playing field, you know. Mm-hmm. And so now you want to just use politics okay. to come across and and take over or something. What other country could you actually ever go to and try to do do this? What you're talking about, though? I mean, honestly, think about it. No other country would actually allow people to say, "Hey, I, I'm this, I'm that." I mean, you could, you could have an all gay parade, right, march right down to, uh, to 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 the White House, and, and again, because we have, we have our constitutional rights inside the United States, you know, regardless if we believe in them or not. But we allow people to speak their mind. We allow them to do things and. Uh, other countries, no. Uh, they would either be a uh, poof, gone. They'd disappear. <laughs> yes, yes. Somehow they would just the, vanish. In the, the Turkish bath <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the Greek. Uh, <laughs> so what made you decide to finally abandon baseball and go into bodybuilding? Well, I tore the ligament with my elbow, if you can see here. 
Is that that Tommy yeah. John? Hey, any chance to flex your muscle? You know? <laughs> God damn! Do you see my? <laughs> I have to show off. <laughs> Which we did the beach. <laughs> but uh, that was it. I couldn't throw anymore. So. So what happened? I cried and <laughs> stayed in bed. No, what and, happened to the no. injury? Yeah, okay. Oh, the, I was uh, <laughs> pitching and I just you know torn the ligament. So tore right off the bone, huh? And yeah, popped. Was <laughs> that was it. Looked into some women's I, baseball teams. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have, didn't have anything. Transgender back then. Yeah. No, so I you're tried. You were before your time then. <laughs> yeah, right. You're, I tried to throw with lefty. It didn't work. I was throwing like a girl. So yeah. no, it doesn't work. So, yeah. Kind of like the way you throw. Yeah, I was going to say, kind of like the way Don throws. <laughs> what are you laughing at? That was my joke. <laughs> <now. Yeah. laughs> I beat him to the punch. Yeah. That's what I see is it's kind of like a, whoever could get to the, up, the upper hand first. Right. That's I, I, beat, I beat him to the slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I told uh, when I was training each year old, you know, um, prior to like him coming to this Major League Baseball, he was already seven, eight years in a row, batting average king. And so and you started uh, talking about your injury in high school baseball, huh? Kind of like we no, get no, no. with the uh, fights, you know. <laughs> right. I, I beat up the I beat up the uh, the b- school bully in the fifth grade. <laughs> oh, that's great! <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I just uh, told him that you know I wanted him to achieve my dream, baseball dream, coming here, and so I was. But, so this was in Japan, him. obviously, right? Uh, well, yeah, we trained here in LA, but uh, he was here, and uh, while other baseball players were taking break in off season, he was here in training. So we trained and, uh, yeah, t- I told him that. He, I wanted him to, to reach my baseball dream, and uh, he did more than, <laughs> you know, expected. You know, so you he, worse than his and seven other people's, huh? <laughs> so what, right. what do you, like, when you train an athlete, do, were you uh, training him for specific, you know, goals? Yeah. Like, what, what could you do for a pitcher or right. a, a hitter? How do you improve upon what you're trying to do for that specific Sport. Yeah, it's. I was a pro bodybuilder, but I'm not teaching bodybuilding for these guys. People think, oh, he's just about teaching bodybuilding. It is not it. It's about enhancing their sports performance. So I analyze each athlete's physique and body and ability, and okay, this guy's lacking uh, explosive power. So I specifically bring in explosive power, explosion training. Or this guy is. Well skilled, but no strength or well, no coordination. So I have to bring in as those kind that kind of training to enhance his, you know, ability. So yeah, for it just those every specific different. muscles. Do you target yeah. muscles like you know twisting muscles like transverse obliques for right. for hitting or you know certain right, right. movements you know deltoids for throwing so or whatever. Ichiro was very skinny, very uh, well skilled, but very skinny. And uh, major league baseball pitchers are much faster, bigger, stronger. And uh, more, you know, 160 games per year versus uh, Japan, it's only 130. And travel distance is even longer here. So you have to survive through 160 games. So that was Pete Rose's bitch then, huh? The 30 <laughs> yeah. games? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 30 games and then the extra right. 200 miles. Right? Rest. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, well, you know, boost up each of those power, strength, and everything. Taught him what to eat. And so he wouldn't. His body will recover faster like that. So. Did you see a big difference in his physique? Oh, yeah. Still playing for Japan, Japanese league. So after the first year we trained, he went back and stood playing in Japanese baseball league and hit it probably three times more of a home run per season and almost hitting 400, you know, batting average. And everything got better. So then he came to the States. But he was criticized, you know. Oh, he's too small, too weak. He's not going to ever make it. And baseball analysts were saying that every single one. Yeah. And he, yeah. He got, I think, the first year, five titles. You know, rookie of the year, MVP, first batting year. average king, first wow. year, stolen bases, everything. So he shut them up. Yeah. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. But that was nice, nice to see. You know, he proved it. So, so did yeah. he ever mention your name? Or was yeah. <laughs> was it, yeah, I, I think he forgot. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did. I've been yeah. lifting weights all by myself. <laughs> Nah, he did. So I started to get more uh, offers. You know, they want to be trained, coached by me for uh, different sports. So I started to coach a professional golfer to professional surfer to all kinds. 
Yeah. Because we ran into that, you know, Rocco Ciotoli was my hands guy for the fight game. Right. And um, Dominic Cruz came in oh, yeah. to the gym, and right. Rocco, Rocco taught him how to fight, you know, stand up. Oh. And uh, I guess he got interviewed one time. Um, Cruz did, and he says, well, where'd you learn to box? Oh, I taught myself in my garage. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Completely That's shit on Rocco. Wow. That's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. So Rocco Ciotoli is not happy about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, he took it out on me, and uh, I, I give him props every time, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you got any uh, sure. any Hollywood people you train? Anybody? Uh, not right now. I didn't get involved in, uh, you know, training uh, actors much because they are not too uh, dedicated athletes, yeah. right? I like to train athletes more because... I, I was competitive, so I want to boost up athletes' uh, power ability to make them better in their sports. It makes me feel happy. <laughs> I think Dan can relate to. No, no, yeah. I, I totally <laughs> what what he's saying. Yeah. There. No, that's great. You you yeah. train Harry Smith, right? Yeah, Harry Smith. Yeah. And who's he? He's, he <laughs> was uh, <laughs> he's a pro wrestler. Beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Former WWE uh, pro wrestler for five years, and uh, came to New Japan Pro Wrestling Federation. But who was his daddy? His dad was uh, Davy Boy Smith, uh, known as a British Bulldog. And I think Dan knows very well. It's a great, it's a great yeah. uh, name in, in the professional state industry. Yeah. Yep. And uncle is uh, Bret Hart. Yep. Right? Yeah. So the, just a whole legacy right there. So a great deal. Right. And Harry was like, like a thoroughbred from, uh, you know, coming from a pro wrestling family. I think his grandpa was uh, Stuart Hart. Stuart Hart. Stuart Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very no, and uh, the Harry came yeah, in. had the dungeon up there in Canada. <laughs> yeah, right. And he came in to train because he was wanted to be an MMA fighter. So he also rolled with uh, Josh Barnett and came here for, to me for strength and conditioning. And, but uh, MMA fights never happened. So, <laughs> yeah, I think you have to love it. You know, I think we sat down, Don and I and Harry, sat down at dinner and uh, basically Don asked him, right, right. that uh, if he had a passion for MMA or not. His mother had a bigger passion for MMA than he did. <laughs> right. Yeah, so yeah, uh, they kind of kind of made that one. Yeah, you've got to be completely dedicated to it. It's not a part-time gig. Right. MMA. Yeah. Or, or you get... Uh, you uh, go down really fast. <laughs> You're gonna, see, but you'll see a lot of MMA guys that will transition now into professional wrestling, especially mm -hmm. in, in uh, the more current times, because of, uh, you, know, you could get a lot, uh, a number of additional years out of your career, because they're, they're two, they're two completely different uh, products, right? You know, right. Professional wrestling. I mean, you're 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 an actor. Uh, you're a stunt person. It's they're still a great deal of uh, a physical ability of what you have to do. Because I, you know, with a lot of people, they say what, what they call it fake. Well, a uh, professional wrestler doesn't want to hear the word fake. Mm -hmm. I go, there might be a scripted uh, outcome of what it's supposed to be, but to be to be picked up, to be slammed, and uh, to make something look really good. You know, Let me show you how fake just, that is. Oh, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're phenomenal athletes. I mean, there's a lot of times you're, you are making contact. It just all depends on who you learned your craft from because some guys were just a lot more stiffer than what other guys were for you know, their techniques. Yeah, well, so you're, you're looking, looking at, at me. <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> yes, I was known as Stiffy over there. So, Ken, um, you remember the first time you met uh, Antonio Inoki? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, did you already know his legendary oh, status before I, you met him? I grew up watching his uh, wrestling matches. He was like... Wow, bigger than, um, I don't know, the more famous than Prime Minister. <laughs> I mean, he was all over in TV, prime time on for wrestling, uh, you know. Uh, lots of show every Monday or Saturday night, and crazy popular. And uh, I grew up watching, and with my brother, I wrestled, you know, just playing around. But I played also, always Mr. Inoki. <laughs> and my brother <laughs> played, uh, <laughs> so, and, played the uh, guy, Gene, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And then first time, um, uh, at that time, my associate brought me to Mr. Inoki's office in L.A. because Mr. Inoki moved to Santa Monica 
Were you like, Excellent. oh my God, I'm going to see oh, yeah, Mr. Anoki? I was Anoki. so nervous, <laughs> crazy. And, uh, but he was, yeah, just he didn't say anything at the beginning. That was intimidating, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he were friendly, smiling, then it would have been easier. But no, he was like straight face. And just quiet. studying you. Yeah. 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 So I feel like I had to say something, you know. Uh, <laughs> And then I started to talk, and uh, he took uh, probably two hours sitting in his office, me and him, wow. talking. And uh, I was, I'm honored, <laughs> you know. I grew up watching him. I kept staring at his face, like, you know, that's the same face as I saw on TV. <laughs> but uh, he was, t- you know, teaching me a lot of things that uh, for wrestling and industry or sports, being, um, say, coming from from Japan to the States, or life is about, uh, you know, taking, uh, basically chasing your dream, believing in yourself, and, uh, you know. Working hard, working yeah, hard. Everybody tells you you can't, but you're the only guy who has to believe in yourself and say, you can do this. So, uh, and he has done it. So it's actually coming from the person who actually did it, and that was really motivating inspiring well, he grew up in brazil and he was yeah. kind of like a uh indentured indentured servant over there right right, right. Yeah. literally he was a slave wow yeah because his uh, whole family took off from japan to kagoshima to brazil because after the war there was nothing left so the family uh you know decided to move to brazil look for better life and there was lots of advertisements uh, of, okay, make a you know, great life in Brazil and all over Japan. So his family decided to live. I think he had a lot of brothers and sisters, like 12 brothers and sisters. Wow. And whole family got on the boat. Hard to was, feed them uh, after, after the war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said he was skinny. But he was 13, and everybody got on the boat of a shit boat. It's like, uh, you know, boat people get on and smuggling into some other country, that right. kind of boat. And they were just all sleeping on the same room on the, you know, on the futon. And it took a month to get there. And his father passed away on the boat. Oh, he got wow. sick. And they finally got there and found out it was a slavery. Couldn't get out of the, uh, uh, whatever, the farm, you did, know, land. Did they bury him at sea? Or did they keep I, him? I didn't ever ask that part, but. Got, uh, yeah, he got really sick. His father wasn't young, so passed away. And, I doubt they uh, would keep the body on. You know. I think so. Yeah, yeah they'd have to push. Him when you think about that, like right. getting on a boat and crossing the ocean right. to try to find a better life, that's yeah, you know, that's so hey, you're talking it's pretty ballsy. Thousand, a couple thousand miles. Yeah, it's yeah, not just a ninety mile trip. Yeah, like you don't want to drive to Subway yeah. and get a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and these guys are getting on a boat that. For 30 days right, to try to find a better life, and then your dad dies at sea. Yeah. Wow. That would mess with your head. Yeah. Right. And he said he couldn't get out of that property because, uh, you know, there were guards holding guns. Right. So they just had to do the work. Kids could at least go to school. And uh, that's where he kind of proved that he had a, I think it was shot put competition or something, high school. Yeah, he was a he shot won. putter, yeah. He's yeah. a big guy, man. I shook yeah, his hand, and his hand is huge. Yeah. For, me, for, for Japanese yeah. descent, I mean, he actually was very, very tall. Yeah, he really was tall. Uh, Average height that time for Japan, Japanese man was like 5'5". Five, five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was like That six tall guy six over there, 5'7". Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, right. So Mr. Inoki and Giant Baba, uh, they would... They served wrestling for uh, Ricky... Ricky Tozan. Ricky Tozan, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Ricky Tozan was uh, formerly a sumo wrestler and became pro wrestler and it became really popular. And so he took uh, two deshi, the students, Giant Baba and Mr. Inoki. And then... Was that here? Uh, oh, in Japan. Japan. In yeah. Japan. So Giant Baba and Mr. Inoki shared a foot on slept and served Ricky Tozan. And uh, Rick Dozen taught them everything. And then as they became, grew up, Giant Baba started uh, Old Japan Pro Wrestling, and then Mr. Inoki started New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. So Mr. Mr. Baba's uh, style was uh, entertainment pro wrestling, you know. And then Mr. Inoki's was hard style. Yeah. You know, fight. Strong style. Kicking yeah. ass. Strong style, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it just 
went a different direction. I, did, but, I uh, never knew any of this. I mean, if they were actually teammates, right? You know, they had uh, they had to have their own different uh, companies like that. That's, uh, that's right. Great. I remember was, as a kid uh-huh. watching Anoki. Um, didn't know who he was or anything, but uh, he fought Muhammad Ali in some. You know, yeah. some event. It was 1976. Boxer versus, yeah. yeah. Boxer yeah. versus wrestler. Yeah. And, yeah. and Inoki picks him up. And I remember yeah. him, you know, spinning around the ring and then throwing him, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then later on when we ended up in Japan, I'm like, wow, that's the same guy. And, you know, mm-hmm. super. Right. Ali said, I'm going to call you the Pelican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't even pronounce your name. I'll just call you the Pelican. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now that that that's co- that was called a Tokon series, you know, the Fighting Spirit series. Mister Inoki started, so he fought, uh, I think, Olympic judo gold medalist in judo, William Wuska, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah, Ruska, yeah. yeah, and then a uh, world uh, karate champion, one after another, and then uh, you know Ali, of course, that made Mister Inoki, you know, be a huge star. But uh, that he came up with an idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. And didn't know if that's going to be successful. Yeah, he followed enough. through he with it. it. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. He set his mind to it. Right. And he followed it. It took him years. Yeah. Years. And uh, one question I asked him yeah, was okay, you know, like when you started to have fans, and, uh, you know, so there are some fans who hate you and other fans who love you. Now, the, there will be a lot of jealous uh you know, competitors, say me other fighters are very jealous of you because you're so good, you're a champion. You get that either way. So I asked him, I got the impro bodybuilding. He'll well. explain that to you, <laughs> Sever. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fry. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, just asked, imagine. Just imagine. Not everybody has to like <laughs> no. you. I'm barely coming to grips with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I asked him, so how he dealt with it? Because in pro bodybuilding, bodybuilding, I had to deal with it. And uh, so how can I overcome that? Like, especially jealous competitors. Haters. They started to play politics, right? And um, so Mr. Inoki said, no, you're not there yet. You know, you're (laughs) reachable. That's why they can play politics, those jealous guys. But you have to go up much higher to where they they can reach you. And then uh, you won't have to deal with it. You'll be fine. Okay, I think he was right. (laughs) So that was, uh, I think, one of the best advices uh, he gave me. But, you know, I was still starting out for bodybuilder as I started out. So, yeah. That, you know what that uh, reminds me of? And I'm sure you have some of these. As a, as a wrestling coach, you beat down a high school kid or maybe a young college guy so good that he knows he can never, ever touch you. <laughs> So you got to get to that level <laughs> yeah. where they, they just look at you like, I can't touch that guy, even though you get old or whatever. Yeah, but, but that, that's part of what, uh, what wrestling is all about, that psychological aspect to where if you – the, the pit is always the best thing you could do in amateur wrestling. And if you could pit a person you – know, if, 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 if you just beat me by a couple of points, in my mind, I'm thinking, you only beat me by a I couple of points. I can still get you. I can, what, I, you I can make up yeah, that difference. Right. But when you manhandle a person and you put them down on the mat and you pin them, you just kind of like stole their soul. Demoralized yes. them, took it away from them. Yeah. You held them down, they couldn't get away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like in judo. Right. Judo, uh, they, you know, one of the ways right. is, is to uh, pin them. Mm-hmm. You know, either you get thrown for a full uh, pone. Pone, pone or, you know, half or three quarters, you know, or, you know, you could pin them. And, and the thing about difference in uh, judo as opposed mm-hmm. to wrestling, in judo, you have to hold them and be able to walk okay. away, you know, in the position. They can't right. have a leg wrapped around you or something like that. It has to be clean that you. You have to be in con- complete right. control yeah. of them. Yeah. So you took yeah. that, uh, did you take that advice with you and just try to just yeah, even spread work. the gap on, on your competitors? Yeah, work harder, do more. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, one of the best advices. Another good advice, you, well, I don't know if I call it a good advice, was a relationship. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> He's been married five <laughs> times, <laughs> right? Yeah. Who would know better? Yeah. Yeah. His advice was he couldn't basically he couldn't give me advice on relationship. <laughs> <Figure it out. laughs> You're on your own, kid. So are, are you right. married, Ken? No, I'm okay. Not. <laughs> you you got to figure it you out. Took something out of it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. So do you get to talk to him at all? Uh, when's the last time you talked to him? 
Uh, oh, it's been a while, several years ago, because he became a senator. He went back to Japan, and uh, different, uh, it was kind of complicated. He got remarried, and, uh, well, now she passed away a couple years ago, but she kind of uh, made it things difficult that no one, nobody could actually reach him without her. You know, So she has to be the gatekeeper, kind of. Everybody has to, had to go through her. And my friend, uh, his son-in-law, uh, Mr. Inoki's son-in-law, Simon Inoki, he couldn't even reach Mr. Inoki for several years because of her. Uh, and that was crazy. And uh, so she passed away a couple years ago. And then, uh, now it's back to normal. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so we can talk and, you know. And Don and I just sent a video message to Mr. Noki for his birthday. For her birth, for his birthday, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, how, how old is he's uh, uh, seventy-eight? Seventy-eight. Yeah. Wow. Because I mean, he's always kept. He's always been in great shape all his entire right. life. That I've, I've seen. Yeah, that's one thing he does. Wherever he goes, he just works, works out. Works out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he can stretch. I mean, yeah. He's, yeah. Flexible. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> So did you have some good uh, conversations with him, Don? Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of a lot of fun. We had good conversations. Uh, you know, he, he teaches you a lot. You know, he teaches you a lot to to shut your mouth too and observe and listen. <laughs> There's know? a quote. I'm gonna mess it all up, but it's uh, yeah. if maybe somebody could help me. It's uh, it's better to keep your mouth shut and let them think you're a fool than to open it up and, and, prove and it. Prove, prove, <laughs> basically prove it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's so there's right. a, there's a lot to just being quiet sometimes and just listening. Yeah, yeah. No, just the knowledge of of uh, Mr. Inoki, you know, it, it was it just uh, really need to be around him, you know, because um, you could always learn something from him every time. Yeah, it's like <coughs> I was when I first <coughs> met him. Okay, he was like you know the person above the clouds, right? And, uh, but uh, when we split, uh, and after that we talked and went out to eat, and me, Mr. Inoki, and Simon, the son-in-law, and we finished eating, and we stood up, okay, he was gonna, Mr. Inoki is gonna go home, and he stood up, and he basically bowed to me, right? That doesn't happen. Wow. Yeah. Because somebody like that, great, would never, never bow to somebody young, little kid, <laughs> you know? But I, it showed me how great he is because a lot of tend to be a lot of uh, very recognized people in Japan become, I don't know, I'll say cocky, you know. So they have that. Okay, little kids, okay, see you. Or if you are even the adults, but if you are not as great, successful as the, these people, then they won't even respect you much. And right. Yeah, but that Mr. Inoki, like that kind of person, bowed to me, say goodbye, was. After wow. he left, were you guys like, hey, yeah. Bell? Did you see him, Bell? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bell left, left you with the check. You know? <laughs> oh, he that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Sucker. Yeah. See, in American culture, everyone would be trying to pull out their cell phone to take a quick selfie of that <laughs> yeah, you know, or yeah. take a video of that. But uh, right. can we do that one again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, that taught me, like, uh, humbleness is greatness, you know. That uh, I think the greater you are, the more humble you come you don't have to act like you're a big shot you know yeah i don't like people who have that attitude right so how do you get along with don <laughs> <laughs> i don't get it well, he is goofy and funny <laughs> he, he cleans my boots for me <laughs> no don's uh like uh, i call him american samurai you know i don't see many guys who has uh you know, he was honorable, have integrity and, and uh, respect. But Don's one of the, you know, few people I've known in my life that uh, has that quality. So, yeah. So that's, I think we get along that way. <laughs> this guy too. Yeah. The guy. No. <laughs> Everybody thinks these two guys are racists over here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, more uh, him. I just threw you in there. I'm sorry to lump uh, you no, in there. He, uh, whitey and whitey. The, uh, the, the mustache stayed here. Oh, yeah, yeah. The mustache no, you're a whitey. You know, he put, put, the, put us through together. Lump them together, you know. <laughs> the no-color <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> Lowest man on the total pole now. Oh. <laughs> what, what are we missing? What are we missing? <laughs> How about the pro wrestling movie we did? Oh, geez. <laughs> All right. 
Didn't, you, didn't you make up some scenes that weren't in a script? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Ken, Ken, Ken and I did a pro wrestling. We, we've done three or four movies together, but we did right. one back in, uh, what, New Jersey or Pennsylvania? Where was that? We did uh, New pro Jersey, wrestling. huh? What yeah. was the David film first? Oh, sh- not just another romantic wrestling comedy. You know? <laughs> Awful long title. Yeah. Right? Like, you <laughs> lost long. me there already. We knew that all 15 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, fifteen years ago, huh? Yeah, that was a yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago. We both had hair then. You know? That's right, <laughs> in good shape. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, was it supposed to be a comedy? Yeah, it was, it was a okay. comedy. All right. Yeah, yeah. just n- not another romantic wrestling comedy. Yeah, mm. and uh, heck, uh, the late China was in there, right? That's right. Yeah, she China. was in it. What, uh, what were you guys' roles? I mean, I, I mean obviously the <laughs> professional wrestlers, but I mean, what what, uh, what kind of roles? Uh, yeah, was, that was funny. I was the father figure. The, the, the father pro, figure. Yes, the Rocco. I can't remember her last name, right. but uh, he he was in love with my daughter, trying to marry her. <laughs> I and see. Then there's another guy who was in love with her, and he was chasing after her, hot and heavy. Did she end up going with him or with you? She, she chose him. So oh. <laughs> Oh, she had some sense. Yeah. He was, she was paying. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you're financing a movie, you can do it. You can yeah, write it the right. way you want it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. well, what other movies did you guys do together? It wasn't a movie. Uh, I think we did the most recent was a music video, huh? Yeah, oh, I got to see that. Dad was dancing, or was he, he was singing? Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. blind dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we <laughs> did. Um, yeah, we did the uh, that first one, and then that yeah, second the one, second one, yeah. and then the That's third right. one, and oh shit, what know. was that damn movie we did? Uh, which one was that? Max no. Fist? No, no, that was never made. No, no. the the Haley Lee, the black kid, Haley Lee, and um, it was Broken Gear. Was that it? It Broken was gear? yeah. Let's go oh, back. Here we go. We yeah, got it. Yeah. All right. Well, it yeah. A few good. years back, we did a movie with yeah, a, yeah, a right. young uh, director, writer, director named uh, Haley Lee. Real good kid. And right, um, right. it was called "Is Broken Gear." Is based on the Street Fighter uh, mm-hmm. video game. And um, that's right. That's yeah. Right. And I was uh, shit. I don't even remember. Not Max Headroom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the guy with the mustache, right guy with the mustache. Didn't you have to dress up like uh, Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> right. no, yeah. Different one. Different different one. one. <laughs> no, that was for the private party for oh, that woman. That's right. <laughs> the rich woman in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Right. Would you uh would you like to do more movies? Yeah, it's fun. It doesn't feel like work, you know. Just do whatever, you know, character you play and get paid. Great. A lot of yeah. times you just sit around uh, for long hours just for yeah. the set up the scene and uh, set up the lighting, the cameras. Yeah. Right. One of the actors said, you know, they don't pay me to act. They, they pay me to wait, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. the worst part, huh? Yeah. Just waiting, yeah. waiting, waiting. Yeah. That you have to be ready still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. then they switch switch scenes on you and you got yeah. oh, crap, I got to learn these lines real fast. But, you know, I mean, like in... Um, Public enemies, you know, I had one line. You know. <laughs> he, uh, Michael Mann, gave me what he thought I could handle. <laughs> so, uh, um, that the the writing project you're doing, do you want to star in that? Do you want to uh, be a part uh, of the I'll, acting part of that too? Yeah, I like to play one of the you know characters, and uh, I think Don should play another character. Oh, he, he is a character. Yeah, yeah, he is a character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just be yourself. <laughs> can, can I get away with being a Japanese character nowadays? You know? <laughs> do you identify as a Japanese yes, character? I do. Oh, that's all it takes. Is it? Yeah, I identify. <laughs> so you're playing the Japanese guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. You got to get back in shape, though. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. oh that's cool. What that's do we cool. got here? But yeah. yeah. Do you know There's a good no trainer? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's right. What would you What would you do with Don to train him right now? What would you What was the first thing you'd do? 
Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, remind me to explain what that is. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, you gotta do lunges, get your butt back. <laughs> <laughs> How do you Where know? did that go? <laughs> yeah. the first thing you noticed. Yeah, yeah. You little old man's wallet. ass. <laughs> no. Like Don's usually such a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's calm now. <laughs> now you've right. taken that role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, another thing we did is a training video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that video, you were ripped. What do they call it, the ultimate training or what? Ultimate uh, power training. Oh, yeah. so it was all, all lifting? Yeah, all lifting. Yeah. yeah. How long ago was that? Long time ago. Yeah, two, <laughs> 2004. Well, 15, 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you just finished a uh, fight, so you were in yeah, tip-top shape. Right, so, yeah. I was in fighting shape. Yeah. So, uh, well, we were talking about that earlier. We we did some videos. I'm not even going to say the production company because I don't want anyone finding out. But we, yeah, we did a like, what, how many videos did we do? Oh, God. Was it like 10, <laughs> 13, something it's ridiculous. 13, yeah, something. Wow. Uh, some guy had suckered me into going to uh, Florida to film a workout or a training video there. And then he took that video, and he went to this other uh, production company, and he sold that video for, oh. I mean, a, a lot of money, and uh, was going to give was going to give me a thousand dollars, you know. <laughs> 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 then uh, the, the other company that bought it ended up calling me to ask me something, and I says. Uh, what what did you pay for this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he told me, and I said, "Hey, so cancel that video real fast." You know, and then I, I that guy lost the contract, and I got it. So, yeah, oh, wow. we're trying to come up with content for thirteen videos that you know, yeah, forty five minutes to an hour. It, it was you know, insane. We were making, that's making a lot shit of up. Videos. Yeah. We were making shit up. Yeah. <laughs> You got a lot of those guys, huh? They're oh, yeah, all guys. over. There's another guy in L.A., uh, not directly to me, but the guy, fighter I was coaching, uh, he was talking to a guy. His name's Jesse. And Jesse told me, oh, this guy manages Don. Don Fry. Okay. And then Jesse told me, I don't know that guy. So I <laughs> called up, Don, hey, do you know this guy? And Don said, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many guys that make up stories. Oh, yeah, we get, we've yeah. gotten that over the years. Like, yeah, oh, I trained down here with Don Fry, and I, I, they've even mentioned my name. Yeah. And that, you know, and so-and-so, and I'm like, well, that's who you just said you trained with, and he doesn't know you. Yeah. You know, just like, <laughs> right. wow. Anyone anyway, that just shook your hand, they're like, oh, yeah, I trained <laughs> with him, yeah. yeah. Well, they've either trained me or beat me. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. That's, that's the two things, yeah. I beat Don Fry. Yep. Yeah. Have those guys <laughs> yeah. tell me to my face so that many. I beat Don Fry, and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that Don Fry. <laughs> Must have been Dan Severn. Yeah, <laughs> they look alike. <laughs> White guys with dark hair and mustache, they all look alike. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the first time I met Dan with Mr. Inoki in Beverly Hills. We had a lunch. Okay. Yeah, and you were in the suit. I remember the first time meeting Dan, too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't was, remember that, Dan? Uh, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it might trigger something here. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, like, uh, I've met a lot of, you know, the fighters in and out, in and out of Mr. Inoki's office or dinner, but uh, you're the only person who dressed up. A suit, sharp. <laughs> wow. I, I was thinking he's got to be confused with somebody else because yeah. I don't normally do something like that. And, and, right. you've, and you've only rented one suit yeah. in your life. Yeah. So. Uh, you think I'd remember that one time. No, you know. yeah. He had that suit from Goodwill. You know? <laughs> polyester. I was yeah, the best yeah. polyester. Yeah. Yeah. Remember old Jerry? Jerry kidded you about that? Um, uh, Jerry. Remember Jerry, uh, the big tall black guy who was the fighter. He walked people out. Um, to the cage. Oh, I goes, okay. I know exactly what you talk about right now. Yeah, what, yeah. What's Jerry's last name? And he asked Dan, he, oh, man, Dan, what are you doing with that silly suit, man? And Dan's like, oh, and he says, oh, you didn't bring it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> so what were you doing in L.A.? I, 
He heard there's a free meal. <laughs> Good day right up there. I mean, it's just, a, it's, yeah. I'll, I'll just say that uh, life has been such a blur for just so many years. That uh, I, I that was if like, I was ever going to write write a book, I'd have to bring different people back from like my high, the guys that were on my high school football team or guys on the the college teams because it's uh, when you look at a lot of people in in, your, in life, their careers in that different time periods, and I, I could go back and talk to like some of my guys on, on the high school football team, and they will talk vividly, vividly right. about a game that happened, you know. 50 years ago, and yet uh, they're talking like it happened last night. Well, that's where they peaked, you know? I mean, they've told that story 400 yeah. million times. Oh, exactly. <laughs> a lot of people peak in different points. You know, some people peak in high school, you know, their athletic um, yeah. ability, you know? I, have, I haven't peaked yet, so. No, no. <laughs> okay. You don't know what that is. <laughs> but but the, the hard part is that upon high school graduation, I mean, I'd say 90 plus percent of most high school wrestlers, their They're career done. ends <laughs> because to go to college costs money. Yeah. And there are, there's not very many uh, scholarships that uh, mm-hmm. an athletes can, can hope for. And especially at, at, uh, nowadays, I think the last I knew is at a Division One school, they had nine and a half scholarships for a, a D1 program and there's ten weight classes, and they're not even 100 percent scholarships. Exactly. Well, you'd be lucky to get 80 you, now. But but you also you need workout partners. So I can't just give up. If I only have, you know, I've got nine nine and a half scholarships. I can't give out full scholarships. I got to find out who qualifies for uh, this, who qualifies for that, or well, they got that women's field hockey team that they've got a you know they got they got a t- title one. You got to have this many teams. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. No, it's and nobody in this state does field hockey, so they've mm-hmm. got to go back east and get somebody who does it. So they're they're scrambling. Well, the good thing now is you can just go out for women's or men's sports. Yeah, you yeah. Want, you what know? the heck? It's going to take care of all that. Can't yeah, that'll wipe it across the board, right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of tough though when people have like mustaches like that just to to walk into a. Oh come on, sport. Dan! I've seen I've seen some of the women on your arm with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> It was dark. It was very dark. <laughs> so what's next for Ken? What's next? What what are your some of your goals? Oh, I wanna well make the infomercial successful. And uh, that's yeah, that's the next step for me. I've never done it. And it can be big, it can fail, but uh, You're gonna have to hire me if they want it to be <laughs> successful. You gotta wear those like a leotard look. <laughs> I'll, I'll break, I'll break them out. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I do want to do the uh, uh, TV series, so I'm writing. But I also, I continue to, uh, you know, coach and train people. That is, so it's, it's motivating. And, uh, you know, young guys come in and uh, go excel in different sports. And uh, a lot of older people have issues. They're concerned about health and, uh, you know, that they have physical problems. So as long as they stay in shape, they can get worse than that and those young guys who uh look in the mirror and they say i got a muscle i I can go out there train people what does it take (laughs) right right so do you like do you take clients still or do they have to be how do Uh, can somebody come and train with you if they wanted to yeah yeah they can how do they get a hold of you money money. yeah Yeah, a a website or how how would people uh find out to get in contact with you uh, they can directly contact me, my email, ken at kenyasuda.com. And uh, I do online uh, also coaching as well. So if the person lives in New York can't come to L.A., then they can sign up with me online coaching. And uh, But one requirement But if they is, can't come to L.A., they can sleep on your couch for a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard no. it here, people. <laughs> no. <laughs> But one thing I ask is <coughs> requirement is the person, whoever it is, has to be serious, you know, about uh, being healthier, getting in shape, or improving their, you know, sports performance. I don't like to babysit people, you know. And there's so many trainers, coaches, just babysit for money. I don't need that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my time is precious, and I want to do, you know, meaningful If you want the, time. you want the cheerleader, go, you come on, come on, <laughs> right. come on. 
You got it. You got it. Two more. <laughs> yeah. And it goes to somebody else, right? Because <laughs> right. you want somebody who's serious about improving themselves. And That's right. Hitting exactly. a goal. Yeah. That's worth my time. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to waste my time. And I have better, I have better things to do. So <laughs> that, that comes I mean, with wisdom and, and age and coaching for a long time. You just yeah, start. No. Well, that's, I mean, you're, 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 you're working with a complete athlete. You work with the mind, the body. There's right. a, a competitive spirit. There's been you know, a lot of athletes that uh, you could train them in a practice room, or that practice room environment. They could be the king of the wrestle mats in, in that practice yeah. field. And uh, you put them out in front of a live crowd and they choke. Yeah. And there's other people that they can't uh, walk across that wrestle mat without uh, tripping over that painted on line. Mm-hmm. And then you put them out in front of that uh, live crowd and it's like the biggest vitamin B12 shot. They're like, do, do, do. they <laughs> rise for the occasion. And most athletes fall somewhere in between. And each one, you have to, you have to study them. Mm-hmm. You have to find out what, uh, what they tell you is one thing. Mm-hmm. And then... What you actually observe is something else. Because yeah. I've had a lot That's of athletes, right. they'll, they'll say one thing. I go, I heard what you said, but I see what you're doing. Those are usually two different yeah. Uh, yeah, things. Yeah, so right. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I know, that was rather profound there, Mr. Fry. Don't you think? Rather <laughs> profound. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So you're going to stay in L.A.? Good. You yeah, like living there? for for now, but I don't know where I can I'm gonna move to. Yeah. You ever think about moving back to Japan? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have mother there alone, so I well, I should bring her over here. But yeah. yeah. Any place you recommend? <laughs> to <laughs> live. Your house. <laughs> yeah, my house. You got an extra room here, don't you? Yeah, I saw. So. <laughs> I don't know. About I think Don's probably. Couple of years older than your mom, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, we, are we about <laughs> done with this shit? I go feed a horse. <laughs> right. Well, Ken, thanks okay. a lot for uh, driving over here from LA and yeah, anytime. And gracing us with your 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 spirit, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Good seeing thanks you again, man. Inviting me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess we're at another wrap here for Donna Dad's toxic. Masculinity. Did like that? Good. Okay. Very <laughs> yeah, good. Perfect. Very good. Sounded masculine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I can go feed that horse before it gets cold out there.